Assalamu alaikum. Mirzolov Bek nomidagi O'zbekiston milliy universiteti xorijiy filologiya fakulteti ingliz filologiyasi kafedrasi o'qituvchisi PhD Abdullayeva Nargiz Erkinovna bugun sizlar bilan amaliy tarjima ko'nikmalari fanidan yangi mavzuni tushuntirib o'tadi. Ushbu fan 2-kurs 4-semestr uchun mo'ljallangan bo'lib, bugungi mavzuimiz fanga kirish, ya'ni Introduction to Translation and Translation Studies. Keling endi ruxsatingiz bilan ingliz tilida olib borsam, bu darsimizning davomini. What is translation itself? Translation is a process and it is a means of interlingual communication. The translator makes possible an exchange of information between the users of different language by producing in the target language a text which has an identical communicative value with the source text. The target text is not fully identical with source text as it to its form or content due to the limitations imposed by the formal and semantic differences between the source language and translating language. The functional status of a translation is supported by its structural and semantic similarity with the original one. The translator is expected to refrain from any remarks or instructions in his text which may betray his authorship thereof. The aim is maximum parallelism of structure which would make it possible to relate each segment of the translation to the respective part of the original. It is presumed that any breach of parallelism is not arbitrary but dictated by the need for precision in conveying the meaning of the original. The translator is allowed to resort to a description or interpretation only in case direct translation is impossible. Similarity in structure is preserved in respect to the smallest segments of the text. Translation can be the object of scientific study aimed at understanding its nature, its components and their interaction, as well as various factors influencing it or link it with it in a meaningful way. The science of translation or translatology is concerned both with theoretical and applied aspects of translation studies. A theoretical description of the translation phenomenon is the task of the theory of translation. The linguistic theory of translation is concerned with translation as a form of speech communication establishing contact between communicants who speak different languages. The basis of this story is linguistics in the broadest sense of the word, that is, microlinguistics with all its new branches, such as psycholinguistics, social linguistics, text linguistics, communicative linguistics, and etc. The general theory of translation describes the basic principles which will go good for each and every translation event. In each particular case, however, the translating process is influenced by, both by the common basic factors and by a number of specific variables which stem from the actual conditions and modes of the translator's work. The translator has to deal with works of the great authors of the past and of the leading authors of today with intricacies of science fiction and the accepted stereotypes of detective stories must be able to cope with the allegiance of expression of the best masters of literary style and with the tricks and formalistic experiments of modern avant-gardists. So, translator's duty is to translate diplomatic representations and policy statements, scientific dissertations, and brilliant satires, maintenance instructions, and after-dinner speeches as well. Translating a play, the translator must, be, must bear in mind the requirements of theatrical uh, presentation and dubbing a film. He must see to it that his translation fits the movement of the speaker's lips, as we know. 
Each type of translation has its own combination of factors influencing the translating process. So, the general theory of translation should be supplemented by a number of speci special translation theories identifying major types of translation activities and describing the predominant features of each type. In conclusion, mention should be made of one more branch of the theory of translation which deals with the pragmatic aspects of the translating process. The communicants involved in interlingual communication speak different languages, but they also belong to different cultures, have different general knowledge, different social and historical background. So we will continue to the process of translation or methods of translation, types of translation in the next lessons. Now I want to give you your, your home task. You should translate this text into your own mother language. It may be Russian or Uzbek. So the text is called Geographical Position of Uzbekistan. The Republic of Uzbekistan is one area with the most favorable natural and geographic conditions. It is situated in the center of the Central Asia, between the rivers Amudarya and Sirdarya. In the major part, the northwest of its territory is situated on the Turan lowlands. Tian Shan and Alai mountain ranges are situated in the southeast of the Republic and the southwest of it, the right bank of Amdari River, is taken by the part of Sandy Kazalkum Desert. Uzbekistan consists of 12 administrative regions and Republic of Karakalpakistan. The territory is approximately 447.4 thousand square kilometers. In the north is the Republic borders on Kazakhstan, in the east and southeast on Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, in the west on Turkmenistan, and in the south on Afghanistan. There is an original combination of flat and mountainous terrain in the Republic of Uzbekistan. The plains, mostly the desert of Kazalkum, are situated in the southwest and northwest. The mountains and foothills which occupy uh, about one-third of the Republic's territory, are in the east and southeast. The mountainous part of Uzbekistan is a part of the West Tian Shan and Chesaro Alai reaches. Gisaro Alai reaches here. Yeah. Uh, Uzbekistan is a sun republic. The average annual number of hours of sunlight here fluctuates from 2,700 till 2,980 hours in the north and to 2,800 till uh, 3,130 hours in the south. For comparison, one may say that in West European countries it is 70-80% of the Central Asian level. Only state, the state of California in the southwest of the United States of America can rival Central Asia, including Uzbekistan. I do hope you have understood your home task and your translation will be ready till the next lesson. Thank you for your attention, of course, and joining to our presentation. Okay, goodbye.